that we've learned and there are three types of muscles within it so you do need to know the differences between them because you will learn about them all along the way throughout the year um and uh let's see and so for this week our focus is mainly on skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle is what makes you walk what makes you talk like all that body movement that we've learned how to describe using those terms last week, right? Those are produced because your skeletal muscles contract and pull on a specific axial or appendicular bones. Um, primarily today, what I'm going to focus on is actually like micro anatomy of the skeletal muscle cells because that's the basis of the muscle contraction. You know, the chickens that you eat, the beef that you eat, those are all skeletal muscles, right? Of these animals. And that that's what contracts, that's what shortens and relax when it goes back to the regular length. And we're going to try to understand how that happens first. And that actually ties if you're in, interested in like kinesiology or like exercise science right that ties into all of that because your nutrition is going to affect those contraction so you kind of need to understand the energetics of those muscle cells right like what actually fuels those contraction is what you eat you know and to understand like what makes you be good at endurance sports versus maybe a sprint sports, you know, like those outbursts of contraction. Those are different types of contractions. Um, so all of that, I you need to kind of understand too. how these individual cell actually shrinks and relax. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture that I'm posing to you guys. Um, so muscles, Muscle as a whole, not just skeletal muscle, but muscle as a whole, right? As a tissue type, they do a lot of different things. Obviously the body movement, mostly by skeletal muscle. The fact that you're just sitting upright and staring at a zoom screen right now, being able to kind of stand upright, hold your body upright, that's also because of the muscles that you have. Right, so those are your posture. You keep your posture up, right? If you didn't have that, your bones just gonna be like flumped down, right? Against the gravity. So it might not necessarily be a movement, right? It's just keeping yourself in a certain position also requires your muscle. Um, so those are mostly for skeletal muscles, but for smooth muscles, those are the muscles that's part of your internal organs and blood vessels. They regulate the size of these organs or the diameter of the tubes, right? Like blood vessels or um, digestive tracts. It can dilate or relax to make the diameter of those tubes wider or it can contract to make it narrower. And that allows, for example, blood to flow in a different rate or it allows you to move the food down your esophagus and into your stomach, right? Because you kind of do this contracting, squeezing motion to actually move it down the tube, just like how you get your toothpaste out of the, the toothpaste tube. Um, in addition to that, they're important in kind of supporting the soft tissues that we have in, inside of our body. Um, it also keeps, those bones in place too, like your shoulder, you know, just that stability of that joint is provided, right, by the muscles that you have. Um, contraction of muscle produce heat. And then the last thing is, it is also a storage site. So I didn't put this down over here. I, I wrote amino acid storage because what is amino acid a building block for? Protein, is that what you said, Michael? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? So they build protein, your muscles full of proteins. And again, later we'll learn what those proteins are. But your skeletal muscle also stores polysaccharide. Do you guys remember 
what polysaccharide stores. Polysaccharide is a carbohydrate, right? What polysaccharide does your muscle store? Skeletal muscle. Any idea? Glucose. Okay, what are the different types of poly... What are the examples of polysaccharides that you can think of? Glycogen, yeah. Was that you, Jim? Glycogen. Yeah, so glycogen is a polysaccharide that you're going to find in your skeletal muscle versus like starch are polysaccharides for plants, right? Potatoes have starch. Rice have starch because they're plants versus animal tissues, animal muscles, they actually store glycogen. Why do we store glycogen? Does anybody have any idea why we might have a lot of glycogen or even protein? Well, protein you would get it later, but why would we want to store glycogen? And energy. I, yeah, why do you say that, David? Can muscles you use up a lot of energy. Okay, so how does how does glycogen relate to energy? Because it's a readily available energy source such as glucose, or I'm, I'm assuming it's similar because it sounds similar to glucose. So polysaccharides, right? So polysaccharides are a chain of monosaccharides. Remember that? You just link those monosaccharides together. So glycogen are basically chain of glucose. So David's right. You can break those chain apart, get a glucose, and then use that glucose to extract energy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that part next week. How does glucose turn into energy? Like, what does that mean? Okay. Okay. So it's not just about body movement. The, whole, the bottom line is, right? Muscle does a lot more than that. So you should know the three types of muscle skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Skeletal attached to the skeletal system, right? To your bones. Cardiac attached to bones. And that produces our body movement. When that contracts, it's going to pull on the bones and it makes your body move. Cardiac, that's the muscle of your heart. So contraction of your cardiac muscle allows you to pump blood. And then smooth muscle are in the walls of your hollow internal organs, like blood vessels and digestive tracts and um, you know, like esophagus and, and places like that. So these are more for what we call visceral organs. That's in the walls of visceral organs. So that's going to contract, control the size of these organs. Okay, so I do have a video on the differences between these. So you're going to have to watch it and understand the differences between them. One thing I'm going to tell you is that your skeletal muscle is what we call voluntary. Voluntary muscle. So what that means is you can control the contraction. Right? You say, oh, like I want to move my arm and you can do it versus these guys over here these are involuntary. You can't really make your heart stop, right, by thinking about it. You can't really make your blood vessel dilate by thinking about it. So you don't really have a conscious control over these organs or these muscles versus skeletal muscle you do. You do have involuntary component for skeletal muscle, and that's a reflex. You know what that is? Like your body moves without you thinking about it before you think about it. Like when you touch a hot pan and you just like drop it before you even think it's hot, right? So that's an involuntary movement that you produced. But for the most part, all of the skeletal muscles that you have, you can control it voluntarily. Okay, so one of the things that you're going to learn is that your skeletal muscle is made up of a whole bunch of very, very large and long cells. And these are referred to as muscle fibers. 
So muscle fiber equals one, muscle fiber is a skeletal muscle cell. So your biceps, for example, is made of thousands of skeletal muscle fibers, as you can see here, right? But if you actually cut, and if you cook, you probably notice, if you cut these muscles and look at it in a cross section, as you see here, they're subdivided into what we call fascicles. So inside of the fascicles, you have groups of muscle fibers, and the fascicles are kind of encased in a connective tissue um, casing. And then even within it, you have a whole bunch of, um, let's see. So on the very outside of it, sorry, I'm jumping. Very outside of it, that casing on, oops, the casing on the outside of the entire skeletal muscle, like biceps, right? Those are referred to as epimecium. Epi, remember, means like above or outside, like epicondyle, right? Above your condyle. Um, so that's on the very outside of skeletal muscle. And that kind of holds all of these fascicles together. And then you have these individual muscle fascicles, bundles of muscle fibers. That's separated from other fascicles by a connective tissue membrane called perimecium. So peri means around. So that kind of subdivides your muscle fascicle. And then inside of that muscle fascicle, you have a whole bunch of tiny little muscle fibers. So that's muscle cells, right? And in your skeletal muscle, muscle cells are long. So it kind of runs all across the length of the muscle, the entire skeletal muscle. So it's almost like you have these little tiny fiber optic cables and you put them all together and you're, you're surrounding them with an insulator sheet around it. So this right here is a muscle fiber. So that's one muscle fiber. And so the outside of that individual muscle fiber is enclosed by what's called the endomecium, kind of a boundary between one, one muscle fiber to the other is the endomecium, <clears throat> the space between them, different muscle fiber cells. So at the very end of it, so all of this red are your muscle fibers, right? And they all come together, one long fiber cells come together. And then at the very end, they turn into tendon. So that is, no more muscle cells in there, it's just connective tissue. Yeah. And this attaches to a bone. Some muscles aren't bundles like this. They can be very flat, like right here in your forehead and what goes over your head, right? That's a muscle, really thin muscle called occipital frontalis is a muscle. And that allows you to like move your eyebrows. Yeah, exactly, right? So that, at the end of that muscle is a flat tendinous sheet rather than a bundle like this. And those are referred to as aponeurosis. So those are more of a flat connective tissue connection to your frontal bone over here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So again, a little bit more words that you need to remember. Muscle fibers, skeletal muscle fibers are really, really unique and it's actually really pretty. And I hope you get a chance to see them in the lab. Um, 
Here you see a microscope slide of a skeletal muscle. Each one of this is one muscle fiber right here. And they're running along this way. So it's really long, right? Um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but if you look inside of this cell, it's, 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 you think of cell as round or square, but it's not, right? This one is really long and skinny. But if you look inside of it, I'm gonna zoom in and see if that, can I zoom in? Oh, maybe. Um, if you look inside of it, it's striated, meaning that you see these banding patterns that's going like this, perpendicular to the axis of the muscle fiber. That's what striation is. And that's gonna become really relevant when we talk about contraction of these muscles, because it kind of reflects how things are laid out inside of these cells. And when they contract, they shrink this way, right? They shorten, the long one becomes short, and that's how the contraction happens, okay? Um, and you see that muscle fibers are sitting parallel to each other, just like how you saw here, right? Everything's running along like this. So it's a bundle of very, very long cells is what your skeletal muscle is. Another unusual property of skeletal muscle are that they have multiple nucleus. So these purple dots or oblong purple dots that's sitting on top of these muscle fibers, these are the nucleus and they're multiple of them so in this just one picture part of a muscle fiber you have four nuclei for this one muscle fiber over here right this one you have a lot more and they're all in this picture it's pretty prominent they all sit kind of on the surface of the cell not in the center of the cell and again you see why that is If you notice from the bone chapter, right, we anatomists use kind of an identifier to describe a certain tissue. So like osteo was the identifier for bones. For muscle, sarco is an identifier for muscle, skeletal muscle especially. So sarcolemma are the plasma membrane of muscle fibers. If you hear a word sarcolemma, that means it's referring to a cell membrane of these cells. Sarcoplasm is a cytoplasm of these cells. So that's the gel fluid inside of the cell, right? And again, you'll see why I'm talking about this right now because you need to know these words as we try to explain how the muscles contract. So if you take one muscle fiber, as you see here, and if you cut it through, and the inside of it, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of tiny little rods that runs along the length of a muscle fiber. So those rods are referred to as myofibrils. So that's pulled out right here. So you see one of them, right? And you see a whole bunch of other ones just filling the entire sarcoplasm of this cell. Amongst them, you also see mitochondria. You see one here, you see one, let me see if I can highlight it. You see one there, you see one there. So between the spaces of my fibrils, you see mitochondria. Why do you think you have mitochondria in muscle fiber? Lots yeah, so they produce, right? They produce what's called ATP, which is cells energy. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that next week. So it makes sense that you have a lot of them because you probably need energy to do your contraction. And if you take one of these, oh, and then by the way, in this picture, do you see that your plasma membrane is labeled as sarcolemma? So that's this, right? That's covering the surface. 
So that's your cell membrane of the cell. That's your sarcoma. And then the nucleus out here is all on the surface, kind of tucked away underneath. It's still underneath your sarcolemma, so it's still inside of the cell. But because you have so many rods in here, it's kind of getting pushed to the edge of the cell. If you take your myofibril, these rods, inside of the muscle fiber, and if you look at it even further, you need a really good microscope to see it, these rods are actually made of a whole bunch of filaments that we call myofilaments. And you see, you see one, um, this is myofibril. This is one myo, myofibril. But you can see these lines in here that's making up the myofibril. Okay, so these lines are your myofilaments. And there are two types of filaments that you're going to see, thick and thin filaments. Thick filaments in here is in dark purple in this picture. And then thin filaments is in green in this picture. So they're, how are they organized in here? What do you guys see in here? They're uh, kind of uh, parallel and staggered. Yeah, exactly. Do you see that? They're actually kind of neatly organized, right? They're parallel, like David said, and stacked on top of each other. And they're even a pattern as to how they're kind of stacked on top of each other. It's just like somebody came in and like stacked them really neatly and nicely in a patterned way. So, What you see here, what you see here is that your thick filaments, this dark purple, are stacked on top of each other. And then that repeats over and over again. Like you see this one here, you see this one here, and it kind of repeats over and over again. And then you have your thin filament also stacked on top of other thin filaments, right? The greens, but they're kind of interdigitating between the thin filament or thick filament. Do you guys see that? I see Jim nodding. Do you guys see that? So they're part where the thick and thin filaments are overlapping and there's area where there is no overlap of yeah, the thick and thin yeah. filament. Do you guys see that? So that's why these have all of these weird labels on them. So if you look at A band, what is A band pointing at? Thick filaments. Where they overlap? Yeah, so where the thick filaments overlap, right? All the thick filaments are piled on top of each other and that's referred to as A band. Versus over here, what's an I band? The ends of the thick. Yeah, so you only have thin filaments in the I band and no thick filaments. Do you guys see that? And then right in the middle of the A band, you kind of have this line that seems to be holding these thick filaments together so that they stay piled on top of each other, right? And that's referred to as like the H zone. Well, no, that's referred to as, I think it's this one, the M line right here. And then you have Wyatt. Z line and the thin filaments Wyatt. where all the thin filaments are held together. Do you guys see? And then your H zone right here. What is it referring to, this zone right here? Hmm. I know it's hard to see on this slide, but. You guys see it? It kind of looks like the um, the ends of the thin filament. Yeah, it looks like you still have your thick filament over here, but you don't have any more thin filaments. So it's just the thick filaments over here versus on either side of it is an overlap between the thick and thin. 
and then you go to the I band and there is no thick filament but only the thin filament. You see that? And what you see is that this unit from Z disk to Z disk, this repeats over and over and over again, all the way along this myofibril, this rod. And each of the rods in here has that happening. So this right here is referred to as sarcomere. And sarcomere is what we call the functional unit of a skeletal muscle. What that means is that little tiny thing represents a skeletal muscle, how a skeletal muscle works. So if you can understand how that little tiny unit works, you understand how your skeletal muscle works. And within a muscle fiber, right, basically you have thousands and thousands of those sar sarcomeres just repeating after each other the entire length of a skeletal muscle. And when you think about if that unit becomes short, if you're looking at tiny little thing becoming short, but you have thousands of them um, linked together like this, and if they all shorten at the same time, you can produce a big contraction. Right, that entire cell is going to actually make a significant contraction. And that's how your skeletal muscle works. So it's this doing its thing, but you have thousands of friends doing it all together. And when that happens, then you just go poof. The entire muscle actually contracts. So that Z disc, so that sarcomere Marble is like. has his hands raised. I can't hear you. Oh. I don't know why. You're unmuted though, but I can't hear you. Ah. You might have like a wrong microphone chosen. Un okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to understand our sarcomere and how it's going to work. Is he trying to type something at me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to, oh, here goes. So a sarcomere is from Z to, yes. Yeah, from here to here. And then you start over again. This doesn't show that it's like a little longer, but you can see that same thing repeats again, right on either side. Okay, so we learned that sarcomere is a functional unit of skeletal muscle. We learned that you have thick and thin filaments, two different types of filaments, right? That makes up the sarcomere. And that you have this happening inside of these rods that we call myofibril. It's confusing. I always need to refresh it every year I teach this, so I don't blame you that it's confusing. Um, and then these rods, you have thousands of them inside of one muscle fiber. Okay, so it's like this unit of organization, you know? Okay, so let me go into a little bit more detail before we take a break and have you do something. Okay, well, I have one more slide. So, remember that striation that you saw in a muscle fiber? Here, let me go, this one. Right, what we just saw are the cartoon version of this. And so this is our muscle fiber. So that's this right here, right? And in here, you see these striation, these banding patterns. So we're gonna try to see how that translates to what we just learned in a drawing. So again, you have these sarcomeres repeating over and over again yeah and we saw that you had your thick filaments area with a thin filaments where you didn't have any thick filament right so what you see here 
that's showing up dark. The dark band's repeating over and over again in here. That is your A band over here. This is what's showing up dark in your skeletal muscle fiber. And then, let me just erase my... And then you go to the light area, which is your eye band, and then you go back to the A band, so it becomes dark again. And it goes, it happens the same way on either side of it, right? So this striation that you see is the A band and the I band repeating itself because you have your sarcomere inside of this muscle fiber because in here you have thousands of different myofibrils carrying those sarcomeres inside. Okay, so what are those thick and thin filaments, right? Again, this is a little bit more detailed version of your thick and thin filaments. You have these thick filaments over here in purple, and then you have your thin filaments that are in green. So that's these guys over here. So your thick filaments, the purple ones, that's making the A band, is made of protein called myosin. So kind of picture yourself this one protein molecule, right? Your macromolecule, one protein molecule. And it's going to look kind of like this with a head on it. So this is one myosin protein. And it has like this long stocky part of it. You take another one and you start to bundle them up like this and you end up weaving a fiber using this protein. And that's what this is. So that's your thick filament. Each one of these thick filaments are made of hundreds of myosin protein. Your thin filament in green is primarily made of another protein called actin. These are both proteins. Remember, you can have many different kinds of proteins, right? Because of the way we built them, remember? There are two more things labeled in here besides actin. There are two other proteins called troponin and tropomyosin in here. And the way I think of it is you have actin protein that's making like a filament, like a chain to make this thick filament. That's this kind of green beads running across. And on top of it, you have these other protein I'm thinking of like a lay, you know how you make a lay, like a yarn lay or something, and you got like different threads. So you have this other strand that's made of troponin and tropomyosin that's sitting on top of the lay that's made of actin, the thread that's made of actin. And that's what's making your thin filament. Right, okay with that? So, the reason why we say your protein's rich, your muscle is rich in protein, now you know, right? You have all of these fibers made of protein that is filling up the entire muscle fiber. And you have thousands of muscle fibers 
that's actually building your skeletal muscle. So there's a lot of protein in a skeletal muscle because of that. And when you build muscles, what you're doing is you're, you're making this bigger, making these cells bigger by adding more fibers, these myofibers into your skeletal muscle. Okay, any questions about what we just covered? All right, I'm gonna send you guys, oh, Michael, go. I think, does my mic work now? Yeah, I okay. can hear you. The, the muscle tissue, or the muscle fiber with the striations, the, the microscope image, mm -hmm. there, so inside that muscle fiber, there's a bunch of the, what, the my, fibrofils, or myofils? Muscle fiber, yeah, myofibrils. Myofibrils. Yeah. So yeah. that means all those myof, where the dark bands are, it means they're all aligned, like, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Otherwise you wouldn't see it, they would be disorganized. Right. Right. Okay. It's not amazing though to think that yeah. that these little tiny rods, their patterns are all aligned. You know, to actually, you're right, exactly, to be able to see those, yeah, striations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to share you a worksheet, um, and what you're going to do is you're going to try to try to complete it as much as you can. I just explained this to you, so I'm hoping that it's not going to be too difficult, especially if you just work together in a group of people. That's the right link. Um, let's see. Okay. So it's going to force copy on you. What you're gonna see is like a labeling exercise. Um, you're just gonna do the first part. You guys see it? You guys are gonna do the first two pages. To edit that image for question one, did everybody have it open? I can't, so again, I can't see you. So like, I don't know if you, if everything's working, if you don't have your camera on. Um, so speak out now if you don't have it. Everybody got it? it does it open? I got it. Okay. Okay. So to edit this, this first one, right? The first image. Let me see if I can. To edit this first page, what you do is you click on it. And it should open up a drawing page that you can just drag and drop the labels. So did you guys try clicking on it? Clicking on this picture right here to label because these label needs to go onto the appropriate place. So again, you can work together with your group to try to do this. And I put the picture that I used to, to explain it so it'll help you label them. And then once you finish with that, you can go to the next page. I'm giving you 10 minutes, so we're going to come back at 10.23 from the breakout room. Okay, let me set a breakout room while you start working on it. I have two. I have an audio oh, that's and right. camera. Okay. Let me see if... Yes, I have to use Jam into... Okay, so there he goes. minds I'm, I'm just recording the lectures with an old phone if you want I'll turn it off is it okay yeah 
Yeah. Okay. I I can uh, I might just because it'll be easier for me to watch anyways. Just upload it to a, like a, my YouTube channel. That I don't really have any videos of it. Um, and I might post it so if anyone wants to review. Um, because I find sometimes like it's hard to keep up, like trying to. Um, and I like the recorded lectures on the. Anyway, so then I just. I do them really slowly. I do like, you know, I take notes really slowly during her recorded lectures. It's like, like a 10 minute video and I'll like take 40 minutes to like write everything down and make drawings and stuff. Okay. Um, what are we doing? Um, we're doing the labeling on the worksheet. Okay. So... Model one, muscle fiber, sarcomere, muscle fiber. Are you guys with, like okay so far, labeling? Yeah, I just gotta figure, just like interpret all this, but um. Actin binding head. This use model one as a guide to label this figure. Click on the image to drag to the keyword to correct. To the correct label. Oh, okay. Um, so that outside fiber thing is a. Well, the, um, the outside. The, it's like the peri, it's like a periosteum, right? It's the outside yeah. layer. That's the, um, what is sarcomere? It? Is it the circle, sarcolemma? Is it the sarcolemma? Um, I'm talking about this, oh, we can't see each other's screens, right? Yeah. <laughs> that little, like, that first little line is, like, on this veiled back, like, the covering. Okay. I think I'm going to call that the circle. Oh. So you got the muscle fiber, and then there's a line right there, and it's like that covering. Well, okay, I'll figure that out later. Is it, and then B is the dark band. The dark band is the A band, right? Yeah. Oh, can I drag and drop? I thought I could drag and drop these. Yeah, I think you have to um, double click it. Double click okay. inside. Oh, there we go. Well, it's actually clearer here. A band <laughs> doesn't quite fit, and then the I band is the the less dark one, right? And these don't fit very well. <laughs> I know you have to like. Oh, I can make it smaller. Oh, I'm. There you go. Okay. I can make this bigger too. Um, does anyone have any? Well, I just want to say that I think this is amazing that all of this is happening while I'm thinking about moving my hand. It's a total right. trip. It's a total trip. It's all happening like a million times. A band, I band, some mitochondria down there. Mitochondria, let me make that smaller. Mitochondria. Let's see. That's the sarcomere. So.
What's the Z disc? Um, the Z disc is like the light band. You know how it kind of looks like. Oh, okay. Laser. That's not the yeah. I band. What's the I band then? The I band is um the light sections. The light sections. Yeah, with the um, where there's only the thin filaments. Oh, the Z disc is from light band to light band. Is that what it is? I think so. Okay, yeah. and that makes up the, a unit of sarcomere. All right, Z disc. Z disc. Okay, is that little? Is that line? Is that line? Make that smaller. What's the M line? I was just about to ask that. What? Anyone know? Oh, it's like, um, it's within the, wait, within the H zone? Because there's like the thick filaments and then perpendicular. It's like those three middle lines. Oh, that's the M line. Where, where the, where the. That's is that where the. It's like within the um, the A band, like in the middle. There's like those. Yeah, where they meet up or something. 